Hello and welcome. This is Wilker and this is an update for Mind Factory Reloaded. Today we're looking at the uh, update that Power Crystals is in the process of releasing. It's version 2.3 and you'll see I'm here in my little Mind Factory Reloaded test age and um, there are a couple really neat updates we're going to look at. First of all just uh, for you folks that have been looking for it there is uh, support now for universal electricity and twilight forest crops um, and a uh, I think a fix when with uh, some applied energistic stuff with the DSU and stuff so um, there are definitely some cool upgrades and some really cool new features that we're gonna get into I will show you uh, this is a block we've looked at before it's the auto spawner remember it uses mob essence to uh, create mobs based off a of safari net you'll notice there's a new button here it's called the exact button or the spawn exact copy button and the way this works is really easy if uh, you have it on if you have it on yes um, you'll notice here that I have a safari net with a sheep with eight health and cyan wool in it so if I turn this uh, redstone signal off it's gonna count down here Come on, you can do it. And then it'll begin spawning cyan sheep. Okay, but if I come in here and I switch this to no, do not spawn exact copies, you'll notice I get regular old white sheep. So, pretty simple, um, but a neat little change that uh, allows you to customize how mobs come out of there uh, just a little bit. And I just realized that I should have done that part last because what I don't want is 100 annoying bleeding sheep uh, for the rest of this whole video. So uh, the next thing we're going to look at is uh, some new blocks. And these are blocks uh, that are just decorative. And uh, they are the glowstone block, the ice brick. I'm sorry, the glowstone brick, the ice brick, the lapis brick. Obsidian brick, paved stone brick, and snow bricks. And they're made uh, basically very similarly with uh, bricks in the middle and then four of the item surrounding it. And you'll notice you get eight for this recipe. Okay. So pretty straightforward, very cool looking. The glowstone bricks do provide light. Uh, I'm in an eternal day world, so I can't really show you that right this second. But I promise they do. They provide light. All right. So uh, the next uh, addition to previous blocks we've looked at is the Auto Enchanter. Now the Auto Enchanter is a, um, a block that I've spotlighted several uh, versions ago, but there's a change to it now. Uh, I'm going to throw a golden sword in here and uh, let it do its thing. Yeah. So uh, we're going to let that fill up and then we'll come back and look at it again in a minute, okay? Uh, there's some new blocks here that I want to show you. The uh, first of which is called the bioreactor. And uh, the bioreactor is cool. The way it works is as such. What you do is you take a plantable item. So basically anything that the planter would recognize, which is the vast majority of your crops it can grow, and you throw it in there. And you notice it goes in the input, pops down here to the internal buffer, and begins getting processed and turned into biofuel. Okay, Biofuel gets pumped out. And this block over here processes the biofuel. It's called a biofuel generator. And what it does is it takes a biofuel that gets input to it and outputs power. So you'll notice here that it's very um, slowly filling up my uh, redstone energy cell. Did you guys see how fast these seeds got eaten up? Watch. I put a stack in there and it's gone, I mean, gosh, instantly. And the whole stack gave me... Uh, I don't know. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to actually get rid of that block. Let's see here. If we kill that guy, um, maybe I didn't want to do that. That's all right. Let's grab a new one. There you go. So you can see it pumping in there. Um, and there it's done. So a whole stack of uh, seeds gone just like that but the way this block works is really interesting what I'm going to do here is I'm going to apply a redstone signal to it and that's going to stop it from processing what happens is the more variety of 
bio uh, sources you give to this block. I don't know what that was. All right. Uh, so let's do those. And then we'll do one, two, three, four. So now I'm going to put all these in here. And you notice that this efficiency bar filled all the way up to the top with just one in there, with just one type of sapling in there, notice it's an efficiency 80. And then as I fill this guy up, efficiency goes all the way up to 1,440. So I want you to watch this one more time here, okay? I'm going to put um, another stack of seeds in here. And uh, notice here we've got, uh, what, 3,200 power in this thing, right? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and crank that off. Let it do its thing. The seeds are gone in a second or two there. We'll let this guy uh, finish up his little shenanigans. Um, let's go check on our uh, on our golden sword. All right, cool. So wow, our golden sword got fire aspect, disjunction, and vorpal. I notice there's two copies of vorpal on there. That's a bug that he's working on. Um, but here is the big change I was telling you about as far as the auto enchanter goes. You can now re-enchant enchanted items, but it costs about, uh, wow, that's 40,000 work. Uh, I thought it cost four times as much to re-enchant it, but maybe it's based off what enchants are already on there. Um, but it costs a ton. So we can cut this uh, max level all the way down here, and bam, now we got Smite on there too. But you'll notice for each... Uh, each uh, re-enchant that you try to do on here, it's going to take significantly more work um, and uh, monster essence in order to get uh, to get additional enchants done on there. So let's see here. Cut that down to nine. Let's see what we get. Yeah, so this has hit its maximum enchantability now. So just uh, kind of a cool thing, lets you uh, re-enchant already enchanted items. Um, all right, so back over here. So we got about 7,000, a little under 7,000 um, uh, Minecraft jewels out of that stack of seeds. So now let's fill this bad boy back up with nine different types of items. So we're at maximum efficiency now. Now notice when I turn the power on, first of all, look how slow it's using these items now. Um, it's not using them anywhere near as quickly as it used the stack I put in there before. Remember that whole stack was gone in like two seconds. Okay? And we're still getting power at a, at a much, much, much quicker rate. Um, it's producing much more uh, much more biofuel. It's being a lot more efficient and we're getting way more power out of here. So normally, um, you know, if I'd thrown nine stacks of uh, seeds in there, I would have ended up with what do we say? Like 7,000 Per, so what is that 56,000 right but you can already see we're gonna end up with way more than that um, off those nine stacks so the key to the bioreactor is to put in uh, as many different kinds of plantable resources as you can to keep the efficiency really high and um, let me show you here real quick the bioreactor uh, which is this item okay that creates the actual biofuel is produced by using um, three plastic sheets, um, two sugar, a fermented spider eye, two slime balls, and a machine block. And remember these uh, plastic sheets are made with four of the raw plastics, which you get by melting either IC2 rubber or the uh, rubber bars from uh, the MFR trees. Okay, And then the uh, other item here, the biofuel generator, uses two blaze rods and some pistons and some plastic sheets and a furnace and a machine block. Yeah, look how much power we're getting out of this thing now. We've only gone through what, not even, um, right there, we just hit uh, 25 of our, uh, or 20, excuse me, of each one of our items. So, way, way, way more efficient. And I guess once you have your items plugged in here you can um, use some kind of piping system to resupply just those items that'd probably be pretty complicated that'd be a neat um, a neat build to try to do one of these days um, you'll notice I have over here 
um, just a little conveyor belt uh, loop set up. And the reason I did that is because there's an important change to conveyor belts. Um, conveyor belts should be primarily used to transport items and stuff around. And part of the problem with this system was in the past that if you had something moving on your item, on your conveyor belt, and you walked near it or on top of it, you would pick it up. So it wouldn't get to where it was supposed to go. So notice that now the players cannot pick up items that are on conveyor belts. It's either got to go into an NMFR machine or you've got to break your conveyor belt system, uh, and then you can pick the item up after that. So not a huge change, but an important one to make conveyor belts a little bit more practical. All right, let's talk about one of my favorite additions to this, uh, this version, and that is the new Safari Net Launcher. Safari Net Launcher is made here with iron and glowstone and plastic sheets, and it can use uh, the traditional Safari balls that you're used to, or it can use this new Safari Net. Uh, did I say Safari balls? Yes, yeah, Safari Net. Um, wow. Big shout out. Pokemon. All right, so Safari Net single uses are made with four strings, a leather, and a slime ball. Significantly less expensive than the regular Safari Net. If you remember, this thing uses four Ender Pearls and a gas tier. So, um, but anyway, once you have your little Safari Net launcher here and a supply of Safari Nets, let's see here. I'm gonna find some unsuspecting critters. All right, a chicken. Bow. Oh, I missed him. There we go. So I hit him, and now I've got a Safari Net single use with a chicken in it. Um, the uh, launcher will go through your uh, items uh, in order. So if you have more empty Safari, come here, pig. If you have more empty Safari Nets, it'll continue to fire those. Okay. See this? Oh, you see what happened there? Um, my, uh, I had a full safari net in front of an empty safari net in my inventory. So, cool. So now we got all these little guys captured in here. And that leads us to another really neat use of the safari net, which has changed. And that is that they are able to be used in dispensers. You notice I have some in there already. Some sheep and pigs and chickens. Uh, oh, here we got another one here in the inventory. And then, just like any other dispenser... Once you uh, apply a redstone signal to it, it will launch your little safari balls, safari nets, sorry, back out and release your creatures. Um, you can't currently use a dispenser to capture creatures, but um, you can use it to fire them back out. So that could be a lot of fun if you filled it with monsters or something. Um, okay, so now to one of the probably most practical updates in MFR. Uh, the very cool and very useful auto harvesting system has gotten a major upgrade to it and they are called upgrades um, and you'll notice there's uh, tons of them in here everything from lapis iron tin copper bronze silver gold quartz diamond platinum and emerald and uh, they each have a recipe that's very similar here's the lapis one it takes three blue items you know the, how those are or dictionary raw plastic, redstone, and a gold ingot, all the way up to the emerald, which takes three emeralds, raw plastics, redstone, and a gold nugget. Uh, platinum uses the shiny ingots from, uh, what are those, from thermal expansion? Yeah. Uh, then, of course, there's diamond ones or whatever. And you see here in the tooltip, it talks about radius increases. So what you can do is the old uh, blocks, the machines for planting fertilizing and harvesting have gotten huge upgrades in usability. So let's go look at kind of how this could maybe work. I've got set up over here a huge cleared out area. I've got a little planter sitting down there. You see my planter's full of seeds and it has an emerald upgrade in it already. Over here we've got my harvester okay, attached to a chest also with an emerald upgrade. And over here is our fertilizer. The fertilizer stocked with MFR industrial fertilizer, also with an emerald upgrade. And I've got redstone power hooked up to them on a little bit of a delay. <clears throat> so let's turn this thing on. Oh, that's not going to work. <laughs> huh. You know, it doesn't matter. It's just, uh... 
let's just do it like this. All right. So then when I turn this thing on, what you're going to get You'll see here my planter begins planting, my fertilizer is chasing behind it, and my harvester is chasing behind that. And you end up with a huge, huge, huge plot of uh, of farmland. How cool is that? Now, you will notice that some of these blocks get missed, and that it does take a little while to catch back up and the reason for that is that these farms are designed to uh, be more inefficient the bigger they get so from a time standpoint it's gonna be harder and harder and harder for your plant um, for your planter and your fertilizer and your harvester to keep up with each other uh, the larger your farm gets um, obviously when you have a farm this big it uh, <laughs> tears through your resources really quickly but uh, a really really neat upgrade for what have always been cool cool blocks um, and it's something that people have been asking for for a long time because being in the past being limited to a 3x3 system is just tough so now you'll see here that the um, you know the uh, the harvesters slowed down quite a bit because it's 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 less efficient with this size um, but the ability to have a uh, gosh what is that a 14 by 14 farm set up completely automated did a good job power crystals and uh, I think that just about covers it uh, the um, the there's been a couple bug fixes. Some of the uh, some of the timers and interfaces have gotten some tweaks. Um, I think uh, there have been some other little small changes to conveyor belts, like they can uh, move XP orbs around for you now if you want them to. Oh, and uh, another uh, block that I didn't talk about that can also take the upgrade is the sewer block. You remember these? These sewage collectors. These are those things that you put underneath your animal pens. So in the past, I think they just covered one block. Um, so now if you throw an upgrade in them, they'll, uh, they'll cover significantly more, um, more room above them, which is nice. And I believe also that uh, the sewer has changed a little bit to the larger animals that are upon it, the uh, quicker it'll collect sewage. So um, some efficiency changes to the sewer block also. All right, that does cover my update spotlight to Mine Factory Reloaded 2.3 by Power Crystals. Uh, there'll be a link in the video description for downloading. Thank you guys so much for watching, and hopefully we'll see you next time.